Oh, hi there. It's Al from Al's Geek Lab. Hope you're doing well. Today's video, I recorded it live. And the whole point of that was, well, if I make mistakes along the way, I guess we can all learn from those mistakes. Today's video is about a product called Enigma One Half BBS. And it's probably the most modern BBS software out there. So if you're interested in installing and configuring just the basics of this great BBS system, then stay tuned because I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. I've got a vanilla installer for Ubuntu Linux, so that's the platform that we're going to install it on today. It's absolutely vanilla, brand new installation, so um, all the dependencies and things like that haven't been met. Stay tuned and we'll figure it out together. All right, let's go. This is exciting. I'm doing this live. I love live things, especially as I get a good old proper chance to cock things up. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Enigma one half BBS. Now, I'm not quite sure why it's called Enigma one half. I should have probably done my research before I started this video. However, it's called Enigma one half. It is a bulletin board system. And uh, I'm just reading off the uh, the, the home page here. I'll just bring up the home page. It says Enigma One Half BBS was started in October 2015, driven through a lack of diversity in the BBS scene, and no modern open source solutions were available. You can read this Reddit announcement here. I won't do that. However, that, I think that's very important to say because back in 2015, there wasn't really a proliferation of BBSs that did quite what the the gains that the 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 idea behind enigma did it was a bit of an enigma sorry anyway <clears throat> so the whole point of doing this was a obviously open source but to also bring the bbs platform right crash bang into the 21st century Obviously, it needs things like internet connectivity, it needs telnet, it needs SSH support, and it needs to run in a modern language. So as you have a look down here, some of the key features, it's multi-platform, it runs anywhere that Node.js runs, and well, I've heard of people running on Amiga. Node.js on an Amiga? Are you crazy? Well, probably, because people who run BBSs like me are probably pretty crazy. That's okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, so what else does it do? It runs on Linux and BSD and OpenBSD and OS X and Mac, uh, Windows and, and all those sorts of wonderful things. So great, that's, that's what we want. Um, it has a Gazelle-inspired file base. I don't know what Gazelle is, but I guess if I click here, it will tell me. But regardless, I'm assuming that that means it's got a really good file base. Um, and I have been on plenty of um, BBSs that use the Enigma One Half software and... <clears throat> The experience that I've had from using those BBSs has been extremely good. The file bases, um, in my opinion, were really, really easy to use. And I think that's really important to me. When I'm on a BBS, I want to make sure that the experience I have, the end user experience, is seamless. I just want to have something that's easy to use. I can get at what I want quickly. So that's really good about the, the file base specifically is really good. Um, then there's door support, right? And door is obviously the, the add-on software, right? It's anything that you do on top of the bulletin board itself. All the customizations are typically called board, uh, or doors, sorry, not plugins. Okay, so um, <clears throat> the door support uh, allows for common drop file formats for legacy DOS doors. So he, that means that you can actually run a DOS add-on, a DOS door. So that's that's pretty crazy, right? I mean, you're, you're thinking that these applications might be, what, 20 years, 30 years old even, and it, this Enigma one half BBS software actually supports those aged applications and of course some new doors as well so um, that's really exciting and interesting that you can really combine the old world with the new world 
pardon me, some really great up-to-date applications. That's that's exciting. And of course, so what I said earlier on about having the need for internet accessible BBSs, Telnet, SSH, both secure and non-secure WebSocket access built in. So WebSockets, um, if you're not aware, are a, a newer kind of format of um, computer communications protocol. There you go. Full duplex communication channels over a single TCP connection. Um, so yeah, it's all about using HTTP, um, or, uh, sorry, it's, it's distinct, there it says, it's distinct from HTTP, right there, it says it right in front of me. So basically it's another protocol level which has been adopted um, recently over the internet. So really, really uh, interesting stuff. So let's move on from all of that. Uh, there's a little demo here, it shows you what it kind of looks like on the alpha version. And uh, you can see some screenshots, let's have a, let's have a look at the screenshots, shall we? Uh, here's a login matrix, this is what you, you're, you would first experience when you log into an Enigma BBS system, and here's the login prompt and so forth. And we scroll down here, there's a file base uh, browser. And this is all stock, by the way, this is how it looks when you get it out of the can. This is absolute stock. And there's a rumor, and then this is not stock. This is, <clears throat> here's a board called F Force 9, sorry, not F9, Force 9, and that's the login screen there. And you can see that it's been modified with a little bit of ANSI. So if this is the, the, the standard one, the stock one, then this is somebody has created a, a specific one for their board, okay? And um, as you can see, you get into this user information. There's all of this stuff that comes with the BBS software. So really cool. These are none of these are extra plugins, right? These are all part of the standard software. So this is kind of this this to me when I looked at this and I compared it to modern systems like Mystic and Synchronet. Both of them really really good software, but they are they they have a legacy, right? They're older systems, and they kind of started to have to um, keep parity almost with Enigma because Enigma sort of was this new kid on the block and it, and it started from scratch on these new open source technologies and frameworks and the rest of them were kind of, I wouldn't say archaic, but they're certainly in a situation where they were the classic platforms and they had to you know build up things like Telnet and SSH support uh, over time to kind of compete with Enigma. So, okay, they're all good platforms. But Enigma, the, uh, the, the, the Synchronets, for example, are on older legacy platforms such as, um, I think they were written in C or C++ or something like that. So these are fully portable modern applications, the, the Enigma ones. Okay, so once we've um, once we've got to this point, I think you're you're probably sold by now. And if you're not sold, then you're watching the wrong video. So let's move straight on. And um, there's a link here for documentation. And it says click here. So I'll click there and I'll go into here. And you will see um, a reasonably complete amount of documentation here on the left hand side. You can see installation, which is what you want, and then obviously going into configuration, blah, 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 blah. Okay. There are three main methods of which to be able to install Enigma one half. And so for the rest of the video, I'm just going to concentrate purely on how to install Enigma. I'm not gonna go any further. I'm not gonna go into um, the, the super duper configuration and customization. That's not what this video is about, but I may do that on a later video. All right, so let's have a look at the different methods. So the install script is this one. And so if you're in OS 10 or BSD or Linux, which I'm in, then uh, that's, all, that's all you should probably use. This is the recommended method here, all right? And you can have a look at the ins in installation script because it's really just a, a bash script. So here's the here's the bash script here if you wanna look through the source. I always recommend doing so because you never know which nefarious people are out there that could make some nasty script. So have a look over them before you just run them, which is what this does. It basically just pulls the script down off the internet and then executes it with bash, the born again shell. Okay, so that's the recommended way, the install script way. And then if you are a bit DevOpsy, then you might want to use the Docker the way, the Docker way. Now, if you want to use a Docker way, that is fantastic. <clears throat> but just bear in mind the main thing about Docker containers is they are ephemeral. And what ephemeral means is that they're stateless. So when you switch off the container, all the extra files that you have, like your own custom configs, for example, 
Well, they go, they disappear, they're gone. It's like random access memory. As soon as you switch it off, it's gone. Now, of course, there are things you can do which will allow you to um, save those files elsewhere, of course. But just bear in mind that there's no permanence built in with the Docker container by default. So that's just um, that's just important to know. And it does say that down here. As no config has been supplied, the container will use a basic one so that it starts successfully. Note there's no persistence directory has been supplied. Once the container stops, any changes made will be lost. Dun dun dun. <clears throat> the good thing about using a Docker container though is when you do a Docker pool, you're gonna get the very latest version of Enigma. So that's great because that means you're not having to faff around with any sort of dependencies or any sort of other annoying things that could go on that could break when you upgrade from version to version because you're using the Docker container, which has already kind of been pre-configured in a stable way by the Enigma team. All right, so that's great. And New Schooler is doing this. And uh, the New Schooler, by the way, is the author, the primary author of the Enigma software. So top kudos to the guy. Right, so, and then finally, there's the manual installation, which is lengthy, lengthy. But but not impossible. So if you're the kind of people person, sorry, if you're the kind of person who's a bit of a hacker, then um, then feel free to fill your boots and run this method. Okay. So it uh, what is important I think about talking about this manual method is noticing all the prerequisites, or I call them dependencies. So have a look here. Obviously, the application is written in Node.js. So your system needs Node.js. It needs version 10 or higher, it says. Um, note that version 8 uh, probably works, but it's unsupported. Now, I have a live server, which I use as, it's a, v, it's a VPS server online. So I, I've got a dedicated server, which I was thinking about using Mystic, uh, sorry, Enigma on. And I thought, oh, wonder, wonder if I can get this working. Now I can, I got it working. But I, I note that the LTS version of Node is on there. So I'm effectively using an older version of Node because it's deemed stable, long-term support, LTS. So that's using an older version, which <clears throat> isn't really fully supported. And so there's always that risk that when I upgrade to the next version of Enigma, when that happens, <clears throat> pardon me, that that could break. So I don't know. Not, not good. But anyway, so there is a requirement. Node.js version 10 ideally is one of the level, uh, one of the requirements. And then it's also highly recommended that you use NVM. So NVM is the Node version manager as far as I can tell. And that just allows it to keep up to date with all the different versions of all the different dependencies. And then finally, Python 2.7 for compiling the Node.js packages with any native extensions. Now, 2.7 is actually an older version of Python. Uh, we're actually using, the world is using Python 3 now. Python 2.7 still exists for a lot of backwards compatibility, but actually 2.7 is now end of life. So just, just be aware of that. And then it says you need uh, GCC, which is the standard GNU C compiler. Um, so if you don't have that, you will need to install Build Essentials. The, so you can use like yum or apt. So you could do something like apt install build-essentials, I think, something like that, don't quote me. But anyway, that will allow you to install the, um, the C compiler and so forth. So I, I'm not gonna do any of that right now, okay? Um, and then there's also Git. And now Git is obviously the, um, the source code repository tool and it allows you to check out the source code for the Enigma repository. So that's really important as well. So, so we need NVM as well, which is the node version manager. No, I've said that already. NPM, sorry, the node package manager. And node package manager is a great thing because it allows you to pull all of the packages down from the internet and it'll install them all for you. A bit like apt or yum, but for node. Okay, if you know what I mean, that's that's kind of what it's all about. So that that's interesting to tell you about this because it helps you understand all of the prerequisites. Now, what I've got here is a completely vanilla version of Ubuntu 20.04 with um, with LTS. So that's it's, it's Ubuntu server, but I have installed it right now. And if we have a look at the uptime of this box, it's been up for an hour and 51 minutes. And that is it. It is an absolutely stock box. And just to prove I've not got any funny business on here, I'll just type in node-v and it's not found. 
npm dash v no no npm either and finally any nvm absolutely nothing so none of those dependencies or prerequisites have been installed in this system this is literally a blank slate i don't think it's even got oh it does have git that's fine okay cool so we got we got one we got one dependency there git is pretty ubiquitous so i'd be surprised if it wasn't there to be honest with you all right so now we are ready so i'm going to do the install script method because well unless you you know you want to stick fox in your eyes and do the manual installation or if you are a big fan of using docker that's the way forward all right so i expect things to break because I've got a, a brand new vanilla system here. I, I got absolutely um, no expectation that this is going to work straight away. All right, so just bear that in mind. I expect to see errors. If I don't, then wow, <laughs> then this video is practically pointless. All right, let's get started. So what I'm going to do is this is my box. I'm just going to clear all this guff off the screen and then move over here and select that text and copy it all right so note that i'm just as a normal user i'm not uh root or anything like that okay and i'm just going to paste this link in here all right enigma will be installed into my home directory in enigma dash bbs from the source if this isn't what you're expecting then hit return okay there we go so i told you the very first thing it will break. I said, I said that. I said, honestly, it's going to break. All right. So it says it needs Python. And, and, and we did look here and, and manual installation says Python 2.7. Now, I'm going to be really cheeky. This documentation is probably not brand new. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install Python 3. Because Python 3 is the latest version of Python. Oh, Oh, ho, ho, ho. so it really does require Python 2.7. There you go. So it does require an older version, and that's why it's not working, people. All right, so there's your first hurdle. If you're on a vanilla box, you will need the old version, potentially unsupported, I might add, version of Python 2.7, to be exact. So it's going to download 16.1 megabytes. Hopefully my internet connection is fast enough to make sure this is not too boring. All right, we're looking good, almost done. Right, okay, looks like it's installed. Let's try that again, running the curl thing. Let's go. Yeah. Still says it needs Python. What am I doing wrong? Okay, Python 2.7. Python 3, yep, hmm, hmm, okay, I'm going to refer to the manual installation, I have a feeling, although I'm not 100% sure, that command-v is just the, is like a keyword for one of these. And if you just type Python here, it goes, nah. So there is a, a thing called Python there. You can see there's a package called Python from dead Python is Python 3. So basically it's just saying, say the word Python. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that. Python is Python 2 instead of Python, right? So this is like a meta package, I think. So I'm gonna install this package called Python, which isn't actually a real package, but it just points to the real Python. And in this case, we're going to point it to Python 2. So it's already selected it by default. Selecting Python is Python 2 instead of Python. All right. So hopefully at the end of this, it's going to give us the command Python, which I think if you look at the installation script, I think that's what it's trying to do. It's trying to run Python dash V. And it's not getting anywhere because there's no Python. It's either Python 2.7 or Python 3. Let's give this a shot. All right. Let's just try Python dash V. Well, um, yeah. Yeah, that looks fine. Um, yeah, it's very, oh, right. Okay, verbose. 
Okay. I think I think we're good. If I just do Python. 2.7. Right. Okay. <clears throat> I think I think we might be into business. It's just uh, it's my supposition. I have faith now. I have faith. I think I fixed it. Right. Okay. That's fine. So we got past that one too. We got Git. Yep. Check. We got curl. Yep. Check. We got Python. Check. But now it's saying it needs make. So we need the GCC. So all of these things in the manual installation bit, which obviously have, you know, it doesn't say any of this in the, in the install script, but, um, but you obviously need these things. So you kind of need to refer to this anyway. So what we need is the GCC, the build, the, the, um, the, the compiler, which is this bit here. So a compiler such as CLang or GCC for Linux systems or VSTS if you're using Windows, blah, blah, blah. Don't care about that. Now, if I, if I recall to, I think it's build essential. Right, I'm right. I almost know what I'm talking about. So um, build essential is a meta package. Again, this is a meta package that has a whole bunch of packages that it will install for you. So you could just install GCC on its own, but what the build essentials package does is it have has all of these other packages in there which are really um, important to actually have when you're building software. Whilst we're doing this, let's have a look and see if there's anything else that we need. So we've got Python 2.7. Yep. we got Git. Yep. Um, we're getting GCC. But as far as I know, we don't yet have Node. Right, okay, that's done. So let's have a look now for um, Node. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that node is not installed. So it might it might complain about this. Let's just let's go with this. Let's see, because it does say that it's going to um, version 12 is going to be installed via NVM, right? So let's just assume that everything will work perfectly well now. Oh, oh, there we go. It's downloading NVM. Oh, oh. Smashing. Time for a sip of beer. It says, this can take a very long time. Be patient. All right. Well, that looked good. I like that. Was that good for you? <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, it's done. That's the primary part of it, right? That's the the downloading all the stuff. Okay, so we downloaded it. It's there, and various bits and bobs have built the way that they're supposed to. Then I don't think I saw any proper errors in that whole process. There are a few things it says here. So first of all, we got to go into the directory. Um, so I'm already in home. AJ Ross, that's me. Um, so now I've got to go into the Enigma BBS folder. It's very important that when you do any actions on the actual application, like NPM um, pools, for example, it's pool. Uh, I don't have NPM. Uh, anyway, stuff like that. If, if you need to do any pools, then you need to do it in the directory <coughs> that uh, you're working for, right? So you, if you're doing anything with Enigma, you need to be in the Enigma BBS folder. Very important, okay? Anyway, so this thing is what we need to do first. We need to go into the Enigma BBS directory, which I am now. I did that CD Enigma BBS, right? And, and it says to then run this OPUtilJS thing. And then it also says, additionally, I should do this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this, right? So I'm ready to... I don't have to remember that because things are going to fly off the screen. And I'm going to use sudo because I need to use apt. And I need to install p7zip. And I'll also have lhasa, thank you very much, which is lha compression and arj compression. <clears throat> and then for sending files via x modem, y modem, and z modem, I can install l. R Z S Z really tips off my tongue. Okay, I think that's all the things. So P7, LHASA, ARJ, good. I'll have all of that. 
Thank you very much. <clears throat> Fortunately, these are all very small packages, so that's good. Right, done, dusted. So if I wanted to do LHA, there we go, it's installed. Great, now um, I remember that I put that command in my copy paste buffer just in case it scrolled off the screen, which it kind of did, didn't it? Um, yeah, it did. Anyway, this is what I want to do. I want to run this config new, which basically is the, um, the application which sets a new configuration for Enigma BBS. Return node. Right, aha, okay. So remember I was saying I went NPM and then it was like, uh, uh, nothing's installed. So that means that also node is not installed. And, we, and I, did, I did say this at the beginning, you know, <clears throat> hello, we need both of these things. But it did say, I think on the installation script that it will um, <clears throat> install NVM and Node.js. I think it lies. Okay, so I will just install Node.js, I think, and NPM. I'll have both of them, thank you very much. No, it's not Node.js. It's just Node then, is it? No. Okay. Ah, oh, oh, one last chai. Node.js like that. Yo. <laughs> 450 megabytes of disk space. I think uh, this, will, uh, this will be one that I fast forward through for you. Okay. I'll do that now. All right, all I've done is let all of these things install because that took a little bit of time. So that's all done now. Um, I've not done anything else, so this will probably still break. Anyway, um, let's see if NPM is there. Yes, it is. NPM-V tells you the version that is installed off the Node Package Manager. Now, let's just see what version of Node.js there is, 10. Okay, and if we went to the manual installation, it said that it wanted 10. Fantastic, okay. Uh, yep, excellent, good, good. Node says Node and Node.js is the same thing. Brilliant, okay, so we got those dependencies. Now uh, let's see if I can remember where I was. Oh yes, we wanted to configure the Enigma BBS. So we'll run that command again, and hopefully this time, fingers crossed, it's gonna work. <laughs> Oh. Right, okay. I had this problem before as well. So this is another thing which I found is a problem. Trust me, after you get all of this stuff out the way, the, it's, it's fine, it's plain sailing, but I did have these dependency problems on another system. And then I thought, well, if I'm gonna demonstrate this to anybody, I better do it on a completely clean slate machine because I don't know if my own machine had other things installed before that were kind of messy or whatever. So I thought, right, I'll do this on a completely vanilla machine. And at least if there's any problems on that vanilla machine, it's not because of my tomfoolery before. Okay, so obviously this is kind of standard as to how things might happen if you're installing uh, Enigma one half. So I'm glad that these problems have been reproduced again. And that is exactly why I'm making this video so that you don't have to go through the same pain that I went through. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can solve this problem. So it, it says here that it cannot, uh, cannot find the module SQLite. So it's a, a, a light, um, the NoSQL database SQLite. So it can't find the module now, I dare say that the module is there. So I'm gonna see what I can do to, um, to update that. I'm gonna see if I can solve this problem, okay? So the very first thing that I'm going to do is an NPM rebuild and see if that one solves the problem. So just like basically a little bit of tidy up and you can see there's something about SQLite there. So that might be, might be, we might be onto something there. Just flew past lots of Enigma things. So let's just run the installer now, see if that works. Hey, hey, hey. That's what you need to do. So you need to do an NPM rebuild. Just another thing which is not in the documentation, which may hit you up as a problem. All right, going back. We are in business by the looks of it. So. Do I want to make a new configuration? The answer most certainly is yes. 
um, the configuration path uh, it will be config config.hjson I'm going to leave that as the default there's no reason to change that so I'll hit return we'll call this testy mic test test pbs sounds nice I like the sound of that uh, first message conference will be local yeah the local messages on this BBS nice long descriptor uh, first area in the message conference general sure whatever general chit chat and then the, the logging level so obviously when things go wrong when you're running away your BBS you might want to choose a particular logging level so obviously the file could be, get pretty big if there are lots of things going wrong if you put it to debug or trace so it's basically saying there's a happy medium info so we'll choose info for now the configuration has been generated so if we go into the config folder and then we look for config.hjson there it is and it's been set up with the information that I put in there uh, already so testing mctest bbs that's there and blah 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 this is the bit here where you need to actually provide it a host name um, so the host name is obviously the DNS name that you have for the BBS so in this case I'm just going to call it localhost because I don't have any DNS set up and I'm running this on a local box all right so let's just let's just leave it at that for now I haven't tested it with a local host before so let's just hope that that works I'm also changing this to local host I'm gonna just change these oh, 44510 that's a bit difficult to remember and I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, 8088 because I remember what an 8088 is because I'm too old so there's the SSH host and your telnet host and for this example we're not going to use SSH because I have to set up private keys and all the rest. You can put in a host name uh, for your website. So if you've got like a little supporting website like, um, like that, you might want to put that in. Um, and then the description and blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> Nothing there that you really need to worry about for immediacy. Um, there's the date format and all that good stuff. I like this login servers it says um, remember kids tell not tell net is insecure tell not um, so obviously you probably want to match the I the number that you gave above for the port so I I gave 8088 for the tell net number so I will change this also to 8088 8088 I can't type and then obviously they are the SSH as well but it is secure it says SSH. So I'm not going to touch that right now because this is just a demonstration um, and it says down here enabled is false so that's fine I'll, we'll leave that for now but it does give quite clear instructions about how to set that up so that's good um, what else what else there's a web socket right we talked about that a little bit earlier on briefly and what else is a web content server so you can actually serve up your BBS to give web content this is fantastic this is all really modern sort of stuff so this port 8080 80 will listen on by default there and there's also a 443 version that's an HTTPS version and there's gopher it will allow gopher if you don't know what gopher is um, it predates the World Wide Web really really interesting stuff that it, it offers gopher and then following that it offers NNTP which is the network news protocol um, so Usenet in other words if you know it by that name um, so that basically means that people who use a Usenet client over the internet can actually view the messages on your BBS as well so again it's um, it's cutting down the walls of how you would usually connect to a BBS you don't actually have to log in via Telnet and go through the BBS if you didn't want to if you just wanted to read the messages then you could potentially just use an NTP. You could use a Usenet client um, to get in there. And I believe that um, Mozilla Thunderbird still supports an NTP. Don't quote me on that, but if you, you could use that, for example, as a free client. There's a few other things you can go in here. There's a thing called MRC, which is the multi relay chat. And that basically is it's it's really good. Um, a guy, the, the sysop at the bottom list said this BBS made this technology which allows for inter BBS chatting, the multi relay chat. So it's like IRC but for BBSs. It's it's really, really good. Um, and 
if you can, I would enable that pretty much straight away because it's just it's just awesome. And then there's email settings. I won't go into any of that. And then there's um, local conferences, all this sort of stuff, the file-based stuff. Da, 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 da. You can set up user logins here, <clears throat> uh, the different accounts and groups and so forth. Um, what else? File transfer protocols. We talked about using Z modem and X modem and all the rest as well. And, and that's it. So I've made a couple of changes in there. Nothing, nothing really major, right? So we just changed the, you know, the ports really. So I'm going to save that file. You probably want to make a backup copy of this before you go in and change any of this, all right? Um, and I think, fingers crossed, that is all I need to do. So I'll come back out of the config directory, one down, and I think main.js is the file we want to run. So hopefully if I've done everything right, I should just be able to run this and the BBS will work. Yes. Brilliant. Okay. Um, you'll notice there as well, like I'm stuck there. I can't like go out of this and return to my, my bash shell. You can press control Z and then hit BG and it will run in the background. Alternatively, <clears throat> I just foreground that again. You can run it with this here and that will, uh, that will run it in the background as well. And you can also do no hop. Oh. Don't know how I'm in caps. There you go. No hop like that, and that will output uh, to a file called nohop.out. So if there is any output on the um, on the standard error or standard output, it'll just pop it in that file, so you can go and visit it any time. Time, but there you go. Um, that should be running in the background. I'm just going to run it like this, though. Okay. Ah, what am I doing? It just takes a moment. All right, so sweet. Okay, so now if I tell net to localhost on port 8088, which is, if you remember, the one I set up in the config file. Boom. There we go. And that is pretty much it. The only other thing you need to do is set up yourself as the sysop of the BBS. Um, so to do that, I apply. I, don't, I can't log in because I don't actually have an account yet. So I will apply for an account. And yep, it's just telling me about there. And I will pop myself in there. I am not using a very good um, terminal program here. I'm just using stock standard um, thingamabob. What's thingamabob? I'm using the stock standard telnet client, which is no good. So I think what I will do is I will take the IP address here, which is, oh it is, this is it here. And I will use the proper client, which of course everybody knows is SyncTerm. And I will call it testd mctest bbs. Okay, and it uses telnet for now at least. And it uses the IP, which is 192.168.1.78. And then I edit this and I change the port to 8088. Boom. And that should do for now. Hit return. Looks good. There we are. Right, that looks a lot better. As you can see straight away, sync term is the way forward. If you're using a BBS and you're not using sync term or something very close to it, do it. Just do it. In fact, it even says right there Netrunner, sync term, or ether term. One of the three. Okay. Username. Yeah, I can type now. Okay, so my my username could be hijinks. Return, smashing the keyboard. Hijinks has logged in from Wellington, New Zealand. Boom, who's online? Yes, I am. Hello, will I put in a one-liner? Hell yes. Now I'm on the one-liner. Excellent. Okay, there's a bit of information about me, my profile, my achievements on the board. And here is the default, the absolute stock standard Enigma front page, the main menu. And you can see it's got a message area already set up. Obviously, there won't be any um, in there. 
but uh, that, that's all ready. Look, there you go. There's a local, right? It's all there. There's no messages, but that's cool. Um, don't think there'll be any doors. User list, obviously, will just be me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's how to um, configure Enigma one half BBS. So you see, there were a few problems to get us started, but once you get past those, it's in and off itself. You don't really need to worry about anything else. It's it's good to go after that. Fingers crossed. I hope hopefully it's good to go. Um, so yeah, if uh, if you have had any troubles, let me or, or it's hopefully somebody else who knows a bit more about Enigma One Half know. Uh, as it says on the on the website, there's a support bit that you can go to. So I would highly recommend speaking to someone who knows far more about these things than I. But at least that gives you an idea of how to install and run Enigma One Half PBS. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you can, and if you enjoy my stuff, please like this video and. Um, if you want to see more of my stuff, then please subscribe. It really makes a big difference to me when I see people subscribing. I get all warm fuzzies on the inside. And um, yeah, press the notification bell and set it to all. And that way you get notified. Whenever I make a video, I promise, promise Scouts Honor never to spam you. Okay? It's just high quality content all the time. And if you believe that, you'll believe anything. But thank you very much again for watching. I will see you again on Owl's Geek Lab sometime really soon. Bye.